hello guys as a follow-up from the previous video i'm going to be talking about the design of a synchronous binary counter with the sr flip-flop and let's start with this example so in this example we have a machine that counts from 0 0 to 1 1 then 1 0 and 0 1 and we asked to find to design the synchronous binary counter so the first thing we need to do is know how many bits are in this machine or in this counter and we can say we have two bits and let's call this two bits a and b and i want you to know that if zero zero was your present state your next state is going to be one one and let's say one one becomes your present state your next state is going to be one zero and same thing happens for one zero. If your present state was one zero, your next state is going to be zero one. And if your present state was zero one, your next state is going to be zero zero. And that's where it's going to stop. So now we know before we design the synchronous binary counter, we need a next state, a present state, and maybe an AND or exclusive OR, but some kind of gate. And of course, finally, a flip-flop input. So the next thing we want to do is draw a table. And in this table, it's going to contain our present state, next state, and our flip-flop input. And remember, since we have two bits, A and B, we're going to have two flip-flops. And this is how the SR flip-flop looks like. We have our S, we have our R, we have our clock, we have Q as the output and Q prime as the output. So in this flip-flop, unlike the D flip-flop or the T flip-flop, which has only one input, or sorry, two, impl two inputs if you include the clock, this has three inputs and two inputs without the clock. So we have S and R. So for each flip-flop, we have two inputs. So let's imagine this was the flip-flop for the A bit. So we're going to have two inputs for the A bit, which are the SA input for the set and RA input for the resets. And we're going to have the SB set input for the B flip-flop. And we have the RB, which is the reset input for the B flip-flop. Okay, so right now let's try filling up the table and we can choose between any one of these values to start. I'm going to start with 0, 0. You can start with 1, 1. You can start with 1, 0, 0, 1. It doesn't matter. But I'm going to start with 0, 0. So let's imagine our present state starts with 0, 0. And what's your next state? Your next state is going to be 1, 1. And let's say now your present state is 1, 1. Then your next state is going to be 1, 0. And now let's say your present state is 1, 0. Then your next state is going to be 0, 1. And finally, if your present state was 0, 1, your next state is going to be 0, 0. And please remember that this is your A and this is your B. Same thing is here. This is A and this is B. So next thing we want to do is fill up the flip-flop input. But before we do it, we need to know the SR flip-flop input equations. And there's actually an easy way to get the flip-flop input equation using the tabular method, which I'm going to show you right now. Okay, so let's say Q is our present state, and Q plus is our next state. And right now, we'd like to know the behavior of the SR flip-flop input. So let's say we have S and R here in this table. Between the present state and the next state, we have four possible combinations, which are 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And from this information, we can predict what the S and R flip-flop input equations might be. If what I'm about to do looks confusing to you, you can look up my SR flip-flop video because that gives you a very clear understanding of what's about to happen. So now let's say our present state was 0 and our next state was 0. There are two things that can happen. It's either your reset was 1 and your set 0, or your set was 0 and your reset was 0. Because if your reset was 1, your next state was going to be 0 no matter what. 
but if your set was zero and your reset was zero that means nothing happened from the transition from the present state to the next state and now we see that the set is zero in both cases so we put a zero here but the reset we have a one and a zero and in order to represent that we put a don't care because that shows that it can either be a one or a zero so now let's imagine our present state was zero and our next state was one what's going to happen then our set is one and our reset is zero because if our set was one then that means the next state is going to be one there's no other possible way to make your present state zero and your next state one so in this case we're going to say our set was one and our reset was zero so now let's imagine our present state was one and our next state was zero what possible combination of s and r can we use we can say our r was one and our set was zero and can we say our s was one and our r was one or can we say our s was zero and our r was zero or our s was one and our r was zero no so this also is the only way we can achieve this result so now let's go to the next row which is our present state is one and our next state is one so what are the possible combinations we can say our reset was zero and our set was one or we can also say nothing happened our set was zero and our reset was zero because since nothing happened Q is still Q plus and that only happens when our S is zero and our R is zero and now we see that these zeros are similar here so we'll put a zero but we see that we have a one and a zero and we'll put it down here so this is the information we're going to use to fill up the big table so this present state correlates with this present state here and this next state correlates with this next state here and now we're going to be looking at this bit by bit let's start with the a bit for the present state we see our a bit is zero so we come here zero and our a bit for the next state or let's just say a plus because that signifies the next state so that's a plus and b plus is one so we see that this is zero and a one we come here we see this is zero and a one and that says our s is one and our r is zero so our s is one our r is zero so let's come here we see that our a is one and our a plus is one we come here we see our a is one a plus is one so that means our s a is x and our r a is zero and let's come here we see that our a is one and our a plus is zero a one a plus zero our present state one present next state zero our s is zero and our r is one and let's come here we see our a is zero our a plus is zero present state zero next state zero that says our s is zero and our r is x so zero x and right now we're going to transition to the b flip-flop input so now we say our b is zero and our b plus is one zero one we find out that s is one and our r is zero one zero and we come here we say b1 b plus zero b1 b plus zero and that says our s is zero and our r is one zero one and we come here we see b zero b plus one b zero b plus one that's one zero one zero and we come here we see that our b is 1 and b plus 0 present state of b 1 next state of b plus 0 that gives 0 1 and the next thing we need to do is find our flip-flop input equations which are s a r a s b and r b so for the s a flip-flop equation we can use either k maps or the main term expressions but since we have a don't care down here we're going to use k maps so we have a zero one here a zero one here mind you this k map is just for sa and so for zero 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 
we have a one one for one one we have an X one one X for one zero we have a zero one zero zero and for a equals zero and B equal one zero one we have a zero and the only possible combination is this so our SA is equal to a prime B prime and now let's try solving for RA for RA because he also has a donkey we're going to use the K map so for 0 0 we have a 0 for 1 1 we have a 0 0 and for 1 0 1 0 we have a 1 and for 0 1 we have a don't care so the only possible combination we can have is this which is a b prime so your r a is a b prime and now let's go to s b for s b because we have no don't cares we can use the min term expression and if you remember what you were taught in class when finding the mean term expressions you only look for the one and in this case for sb the row we have a one is a prime b prime because a equals zero and b equals zero so we have a prime b prime plus which shows a transition to the next row a b prime and this can be further simplified to b prime a prime plus a which is just equal to b prime and we're going to do the same thing for RB because it doesn't have a don't care. And here we see that the ones we have are here and here. So in this row, our A is 1, so we put A. And our B is 1, so we put B. Plus, which signifies the transition to the next row. Since A is equal to 0, it's going to be A prime. And B equal 1, B. And this can also be further simplified into B a prime plus a which is same thing as just b right now we have the flip-flop input equations and the only thing we need to do is design it which should be the easiest part i want you to remember we have two flip-flops which are the sr flip-flop for a and the sr flip-flop for b since this is a synchronous binary counter the two clock inputs of the flip-flops are going to be connected to the same clock and for SA we have A prime B prime and it's ended together so we need an AND gate and for RA we have A B prime and since it's added together we're going to also need an AND gate <coughs> And since A and B prime are ended together, we're going to also need, for SB, we just have B prime as the input. And for RB, we have B as the input. You can do it this way, or you can connect it manually, putting B here, putting B prime here, putting A here, then B prime here, just making it scruffy looking. I mean, it's your choice, but I'm sure all of us want to make our things look professional. So this is the better way to like present your circuit and that's it guys if you have any questions comments or you want me to do a video on any topic you do not understand please let me know in the comment section below so have a nice day peace